Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video we're going to be talking about the camera inside of Unity. So, uh, you can see over in our test scene one that I have a game object called Main Camera. It's there by default whenever you create a, uh, a scene. And in this camera, the game object, we have a couple different components, including Transform and Camera, which is obviously what we're going to be focusing on. And also GUI layer, which is uh, kind of for the old way of rendering stuff uh, that we don't really need to worry about too much. Uh, flare layer, uh, which allows the camera to receive lens flares, something that's not going to be too relevant in this 2D course. And audio listener, which allows the camera to pick up on basically audio sources inside the scene, like music and sound effects, and play it back for you, the player, or your audience, the player. So the important thing here we're focusing on is this camera component and the camera preview window. So in the camera preview, you can see that uh, these two game objects, the Jeffrey the Dude and Jeffrey the Dude number one, aren't actually visible. So if we zoom out, we can see that it looks like the camera itself uh, with its perspective view is, is kind of targeting this area. So it's a little bit weird why it wouldn't be there. Um, if we go ahead and select these two game objects, uh, you'll notice that one is at Z position negative 10 and the other is at Z position 0, which is slightly relevant even if we're dealing with a 2D game because although uh, you might have a 2D perspective, really Unity is still uh, rendering everything within a 3D universe. So it's kind of a pseudo 2D in a sense. So to really see why it's doing this, why we can't see the characters, we want to pop out into a 3D view temporarily. And we can see that the camera is angled this way towards uh, Z position zero. But that this game object, the Jeffrey the Dude, is actually basically right on top of the camera. So the camera can't see it because it's looking forward and this is actually at the same position Z-wise as the camera. So if we go to the game view, we'll actually notice that one of those game objects is actually visible, and that's because it's at game position zero. So the camera's facing game position zero, and with this perspective view, it basically calculates how far out it is and renders it proportionally. Now if we want this game object to appear on the camera, we have two choices. One is to either move the main camera or to move the game object. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna move the uh, the main camera back two positions, or two units of Z. And if we go back to the game view, we can see that both of the Jeffreys are now actually rendering, which is good. <clears throat> but you will notice that one is rendered a lot larger than the other one. That's because currently our camera is in perspective mode. Now for some games, especially 3D games, you may want a perspective mode, but here we're actually going to change it to an orthographic mode because we're kind of dealing with a traditional pixel art game here that doesn't really worry about perspective. So you'll notice uh, in, well, in game mode mostly, that as soon as we change the, pro uh, the projection of the camera from perspective to orthographic, they're rendered at exactly the same size despite one being further back in the Z position than the other one. And the reason for that is that when you take away the perspective view, distance is not taken into account. So in order to get that pixel art look where the size of the sprite and its scale determines how big it is on the camera rather than its distance from the camera, because to get closer to a true 2D game, we're going to more or less pretend that the z-axis doesn't even exist for the purpose of the game. So for now, we're going to leave it in orthographic mode, and pretty much for the rest of this series, it's going to be in orthographic mode as well. Now, if you want to determine how much stuff can actually fit on the camera, what we want to do is modify the size of the camera, basically the viewing space of the camera. So if we drop this to three, you'll notice everything gets bigger, and that's because the camera's rendering less of the stuff on the scene. So obviously, if we go and increase this to 10, it gives us a lot more items rendered on screen or a lot more space for those items anyway. Now it's going to be kind of up to you to figure out how much size you want to have in your game based on the size of your sprites. But one other script that we'll be touching on later on that you can pick up in the asset store is called Pixel Perfect Camera, uh, which will help you get an ideal size for rendering pixel art sprites. 
But one more thing that you probably noticed is that the background's blue, and that's probably not what we want. So while it is possible to render different images as the background skybox inside of your camera, what we're going to be doing is just changing it to a solid background color for now to keep things simple, and we'll worry about the background later on. So under background, I'm simply going to select an alternate color. Usually a dark color, like some shade of a almost absolute black, works pretty well for the background. And then you would have, let's say, the game level render on top of that. Of course, it really depends on what style of game you're shooting for, but we'll leave it at that for now since it looks pretty much fine. Keep in mind, if you have UI elements, such as this text we created before, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your text or your UI is actually visible on top of the screen. You're probably going to have something a bit more complicated than just text appearing by itself there. But here we'll go to the text element and we'll change the color from that gray to more of a white so that it renders in contrast to the black background. So I would say that for the sake of consistency, if you're going to be doing this orthographic perspective, you probably want to make sure that the Z position of all your game objects is the same. So I'm going to take this guy here and move him to position zero as well. So he's right next to Jeffrey one as well. But aside from that, that's going to be the basics of setting up your camera for a 2D orthographic game inside of Unity. So I've been Chris. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future videos.